Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a game two of four for the night. Coming up here, Dreamtime versus Titan. What's the good word, gods? Can Titan take it 2-0? Titan are freaking 8-1 in WPC. That is... Yeah? It's impressive? Yeah. They should be 9-1. 9-0. Uh, oh. The team they lost to, Arenda, team mm -hmm. not very well known, and they are one of the upcoming amateur teams in China, so... Titan will be saying, hey, look, we should be 9-0, nine nine but 8-1 is pretty damn good. They haven't versus Newbie, DK, IG, any of the top teams, so it's only going to get incredibly harder from here on out. But for now, Game 2 against Dreamtime, yeah. they want to get that win. They're still off to a good start. And, yeah. uh, you know, we've already got this draft underway, so why don't we go ahead and take a look. We'll have Titan on the dire side this time. Dreamtime will be on the Radiant. And they'll get things rolling with a ban on the Bat Rider. And Dreamtime will take out Invoker as well as Lycan. So Ban's looking pretty straightforward. All heroes that uh, we've seen and are pretty scary. Yes. Apparently KYXY plays a, a pretty mean Invoker. He does. He does. And these four bands are probably currently the, let's say, most, most banned heroes in the, uh, I'd say in WPC, at least the most prioritized heroes. Um, then you look towards, apart from maybe like the supports, like the AA Shadow Shaman. So this is where these first couple picks probably see some AA picks, some Shadow Shaman picks. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even a Nix oh, Nature's Prophet's probably the other big hero here. If D DT don't take the Nature's Prophet, almost hands down Titan will for a higher. Yeah, I would not be surprised to see that whatsoever. There's the Ancient Apparition you mentioned for Dream Time. And, oops, that's my bad. There will be an Ancient Apparition coming up here momentarily for DT. But a hero that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. A support that um, you know, every, everybody's been loving these days. Yeah, he's he's big and popular. So we'll see if DT looks to do anything unusual here in game number two. I'd love to see them go for some kind of an unconventional pick, be it something. They, this is a team who likes to run Wisp every now and then. Um, mm -hmm. Back th This team actually used to be mostly known as Rising Stars, and they were in the uh, TI3 qualifiers, and they caused a few upsets here and there by using uh, Wisp. Uh, super, one of the better Wisp plays in China, so maybe something they want to go for here is a little surprise pick against Titan. Mm -hmm. And Wisp with Ancient Apparition paired together can be okay. It does have some strengths, um, but one of those strengths is not crowd control, and if they opt for that, well, they'll be lacking on the stuns and may have to make up for it with other picks. I don't know. I, I still don't think Ancient Apparition is always first pick material. I think you can be if you want to build the team around it, but you have to make sure you build that draft in such a way that Ancient Apparition can really have a, a strong effect. Yesterday we saw that, uh, like, Slark, Ancient Apparition, Nature's Prophet trio, which was a, a pretty scary group just yes. in general. Wrath of Nature, and once Slark got him tethered, made for pretty easy AA ult. Stuff like that seemed to work pretty well. But just throwing him in there as, like, any old jolly support doesn't always work out uh, that well in the end. But Titan, there you go. That's their Nature's Prophet. <laughs> Not surprised That's, to see Ohio yeah. Yeah, get that once again. Dude, Ned's got some weird looking ears. He does have odd looking ears. I don't know if that is that that's Nat? Um You're yeah, that's sure? Nat. I don't know if that's like a natural thing or if it's he's had an accident at some point in his life, but yeah, those are some funky looking ears. I huh. need to see the other one for comparison to see if they're both like I that. was just thinking that. I mean, forget the draft, I just want to know what his his other ear looks like right now. That's really interesting. Come on, Ned, give us a little swirl. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a little swirl. <laughs> let's let's see the other ear. <laughs> well, he should be smiling right now. That's going to be his sand cane that they've picked up. And Jesus, he looks a little <laughs> sleepy. Looks <laughs> <laughs> a little unsatisfied. Taking, taking the name Dreamtime a little too seriously right now. Yeah, that is. I think that was the guy who, after that game one loss, was like rubbing his eyes. He kind of looked like he was sad and was crying, but I think he was just really sleepy Maybe and like still tired. waking up. <laughs> Who is that? Is that... Is I that, do not know. Is I, that Dreamy You himself? I, <laughs> I think it's one of the old players from Rising Stars, so I think it's Air or... I think it's Air or Super, even? Okay. I'm not sure. Someone in the chat probably knows better than we do. I, I don't recognize the players from Dreamtime, Someone says it's Sad Chuan. Sad <laughs> Chuan. <laughs> could be. Could be. Um, uh. So, we'll see what Dreamtime want to do with their next pick. Looks like his, it will be a dark seer. His ears look more normal. Those are, yeah. those are some normal looking ears. He's given us the full view of both ears as well, which I appreciate. Yeah. So, that's big, big props to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's not very excited, man. He's like, man, I'm gonna, gonna got Chinese Dota. This is some boring farm fest. <laughs> like, it's like, uh, damn it. 
Why are we playing this Chinese Dota? Yeah, seriously, guys. <laughs> oh, boy. So we look to see some Darkseer here. We actually saw Darkseer banned out by Titan in the last game. And uh, I guess... I mean, could you call that a respect ban? Do Dreamtime have a a, a, a universe-equivalent Darkseer player here? I... Uh, no. I don't think so. No, just just an all-around good hero? Yeah, it's all-around good hero. Maybe they've okay. been playing it here and there. I, have, I haven't watched enough of their games. Like, they haven't been playing that many tournaments since Sina Cup. Okay. They weren't in... What did we cast in Sina? We cast in something. Well, we cast in Star, Star Ladder. That's the one I was looking for. Actually, mm. yeah, they were in Star Ladder. I can't remember watching them in Star Ladder, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we cast too many games here, Andrew. Yeah, they, they run it's together pretty quick. I, I cast a DT in something. It might have been the MPGL or... It's a good. It's a good problem to have. Something too much Dota to cast mm. that you don't remember games. It's I true. It's it's definitely true. But I remember bits and pieces. I'm oh yeah, I saw an Invoker versus a Nature's Prophet yesterday. Which teams? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I was casting or just watching or <laughs> it's just too, WPC's too much Dota. good because like the, well, right now WPC is good because you know it's like Titan every day. Like for me, I've having right. my mind Titan's playing every day. They're starting off on the easy team. It gets harder and harder. Yeah. And then. Yeah, there we go. That makes it a little bit, a uh, little when easier. When I mix to... in watching like Starlighter and other tournaments, and I'm like, holy, what's going on? Yeah. So uh, the next few bands coming out here, Dreamtime will uh, take out the Naga Siren as well as the Zippin' Storm Spirit, and it uh, looks like Titan will ban out the Alchemist, and they'll think for it for a moment here, and then ultimately they'll they'll yeah. settle on the Spectre for their fourth ban. Yep. Yamate's been uh, really pulling together some good drafts for Titan, and this this four core of players like they used to be with Mushi, um, now with Yamate is always like they've been some great solid players. Like their actual in-game leadership and knowing what to do with their heroes is perfect, but their actual drafting and coming up with the general strategy they've always like needed that extra fifth person, that kind of leader. Um, they used to play with Miracle, who's now in, on uh, Team Z uh, not Zenith, uh, Scythe. Mm -hmm. So uh, he was doing pretty pretty good job of that, but Yamate to me has just been a nice little upgrade of just someone who's a slightly better, uh, in, well, I guess captain slash drafter. Yeah, uh, I mean it. It seems like it. The, the so far today and the games we saw yesterday, Titan have just been they've been on point, very crisp execution. They may have been the favorites coming into some of these matches, but still they've they've been pretty on point with their strategies. And I, I mean, I'm starting to get to this point of how do you deal with Net Sand King? It seems like he's just that. He, he almost plays Sand King like a Nyx Assassin when he's off the map. It's like he could be anywhere. He could be yes. in a tree near you, you know, just <laughs> ready to hop out and and uh, bring on the pain. Surprises so, for everyone. Yeah, he's he's pretty mysterious with that hero, and uh, he's been impressive. I, I've been a little bit cynical about Sand King in this patch, but uh, he's he's quickly changing my mind here. He uses that hero a little bit differently than anyone I've seen in the West. But they will grab their second support here, and Titan will grab the Disruptor to go with their Sand King. And, uh, yep. Support that I'm also quite fond Great of. Great support against the Darkseer. And this is mm -hmm. probably one of the incentives for Titan to pick this up. Uh, you can actually zone out the Darkseer because if he comes near you and then tries to surge away, you glimpse him back, you connect field, he is, he's done so. There's no getting out of that. So uh, I think we saw we saw this yesterday. Titan punishing an offlane Darkseer using Disruptor. It was this exact matchup. And mm -hmm. Titan are going to go for it again. It's a good support to pair with the Sand King. Because Disruptor actually has decent damage output with even just a level 1 Thunderstrike. It's 160 magic damage at level 1, which is yep. pretty good. Yep, pretty solid and gives you vision as well, so a pretty useful spell. The other good thing about picking Disruptor here is if Dreamtime were considering grabbing a Wisp as their second support with either their third or fourth pick, you usually don't really want to pick a Wisp into a Disruptor. It's no. possible, but usually not ideal. Well, Glimpses. they've got the Shadow Shaman now, so they've yep. got their two supports. Yeah, so so. yeah, forces them into the Shadow Shaman and well, maybe not. Neither team with their word, carry or mid. Both teams just picking up their two supports plus offlaner, which is fairly standard in uh, the current drafting metagame. Unless you're getting something like a Lycan really early on, you don't generally pick carries. And Titan, they reveal a Doom. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you thinking here? Mid or carry Doom? Generally, it's played as a carry. Okay, so like a position say, one style Doom. Well, yeah, he's he's safe lane farmer, but often I think it'll lead towards Titan picking up another like semi carry from mid lane. Okay, whatever so, that may be. So Doom's probably the KYX hero here. Yeah. Okay. I think then we look towards Yamate playing. Maybe I mean something like an OD is actually not too bad again, but yeah. TA is okay. Puck's probably pretty good. Like you've got Nature's Prophet as as well as a semi carry, so I you could still go for a puck. I still need to see an NWP. Uh, Shadow Fiend. Gods. Oh yeah, that is that is something that uh, cool you're, you're not a real Dota caster until you see that, huh? Yeah. So okay, some truth to that. Hand. Yeah. 
He is. I've yeah. I've heard good things, but I have not <laughs> not been able to see it firsthand. Only only in replays. Only uh, yeah. Only as a spectator. One day, one day I'll get my wings. I want a Dreamtime look here. I think. I don't, hmm. They have last pick, so I don't think they want to get their mid hero. They want to wait to see what Titan pick before they decide on their mid. So I think they're better off just picking some kind of safe lane farmer here, since it's, mm -hmm. it's they don't have to worry too much about being countered. But so who would be good here as a, a position mm. one? Um, I mean they could. This is where I wish we could just like pop up a list of heroes left. In yeah, the I'm trying to like who who would be I ideal in this kind of a scenario. Morphling's still there. I didn't like. I don't. I'm not big on the Morphling as a safe lane farmer. Yeah. Luna's okay. Razor. Ooh. DT have played a bit of. They, this is the one here I remember them using quite a bit back in the Sina Cup, back in Starlighter as well. They really like their Razor. Mm -hmm. Now, how do they run him? Is it a position one or a, a solo mid kind of Razor? They've done both. They okay. generally run him in the tri lane, but they've also did one or two games where he was mid. If he gets a good matchup. Yeah, and a, a good pick here because, like you were mentioning, Yamate could be considering an OD this game, yeah. and now he'll be thinking <laughs> twice about that OD. Now it's like, okay, maybe not. Yeah. So, okay, Titan will ban out the Anti-Mage. That, that was a hero that came to mind for me in terms of their safe lane farmer. But now that they've got the Razor, even if they wanted to put Razor mid, eh, Razor, Anti-Mage, Darkseer can work just a little bit greedy. Yeah, it's. I think I, this is probably a pretty good Anti-Mage game for three yeah. times. So. Yeah, he's probably a, a good ban. Could, could work out. There's a lot of counters to him. Like you've got Doom, you've got Disruptor with a Silence and Glimpse, you've got Sanking with good Lockdown. True. But, I'll ban out the Yamate Corp. That's a that's a smart ban. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw how powerful his uh, his Queen of Pain can be yesterday. Yeah, not to mention Blink against uh, the Static Link of a Razor. Always a good tool to have. So, mm -hmm. yeah. see what Titan have in mind here now that the Razor pick come up. This is definitely saying to catch him a little by surprise. Then Dreamtime also have last pick, which gives them another chance to catch Titan by surprise with something that they don't have a response for. So, yeah, I, I like this Dreamtime draft. Yeah, I you know I do too. Team blue, as it as it were, uh, team blue slash purple, that side of the rainbow, with a a guy with sticks on his head. Yeah. <laughs> and all okay. right, Pretty interesting. Standard. Yeah. Nothing, nothing too crazy from uh, Titan. No, keep, it, <laughs> keep it quiet Hush here. The word. <laughs> so Dreamtime have kind of an interesting draft though in terms of control. Shadow Shaman, their only hero with. Uh, any kind of real lockdown. Ancient Apparition, Darkseer, they bring a lot of utility to the table, but none of those hard stuns, and um, wow. Well, some interesting final picks coming out here. Yep. Uh, well, for Titan, I mean, they've they've got themselves, a, like, the first four picks, very standard stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Most likely Doom and the Safe Lane Farm. They go for the Mirana, so nothing out of the ordinary, nothing crazy. And yeah. It's, it's just... It's all business for Titan here. They just want to get that next. So a, a Yamate Priestess of the Moon is that the? I imagine so. I'm not 100 percent sure. We'll find out soon enough. But yeah, that'll be interesting. Dreamtime are sitting back down. They're ready. They're prepared for their last pick. And what is it going to be? The Bloodseeker. Blood Man, I love it. We have not seen Bloodseeker in competitive Dota in some time. And I, I would venture to say there's good reason for that. Are you a Bloodseeker fan? No, I. He this, was. This well, hero is. <laughs> Ass tier. Like, when we <laughs> there's 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 like garbage tier and then there's ass tier, which is like the level below the garbage so, tier. So so at well we we had gas and or gas we had, we had we had garbage and then we had dumpster and uh, I I guess you could say ass is below dumpster. Blood That's pretty in a bad. Tier of his own. I tell you that he He's, took my vote for worst hero overall in competitive when we had his that. Uh, only had that situation where I like him is like against a slug, and even then I still think he's like he goes up from like <laughs> ass tier to like mediocre tier <laughs> yeah like, he is just never impressed i mean we, we had a pretty hot debate in the house uh trying to decipher who was the worst hero and spirit breaker was thrown around quite a bit um yeah, some spirit su pretty bad. some suggested blood seeker the only redeeming quality of blood seeker is that he has a silence and any hero that has a silence i like to think well that's some utility how bad could he be but blood <laughs> silence seeker... that gives him more damage <laughs> yeah. it's like here i'm gonna silence you oh by the way you get <laughs> 127% bonus damage. Yeah, he... Sweet. <laughs> he, he adds a twist where you just as you say that, like, well, how bad could he be? It's like, well, actually, it could be pretty bad. It's uh, really not so great. And the so, Silas has a stupid long cast time. That's the thing I hate most about his uh, his Blood Rage, is that you you try to go Genki here and cast it, but they, you get this big wind-up where you're like, you raise your hands in the air, just throw the Silas, yeah. and then they've already blinked away, they've 
like I don't know. They've or they've they just run away you or silenced yeah. you or they can actually a... cast a spell before you get the silence off because the silence has such a long cast time. Yeah. It's... Now one cheeky thing what you can do stupid. with the blood seeker is go for an early four staff, and then when you rupture people, even if they're smart enough to stand still straight away, you can still four staff them, and they take some of that extra rupture damage. Yeah. So that is something, and of course you can't use uh, a, a defensive four staff to try and get yourself out of harm's way. You'll still take all that damage from rupture. So that's that's one thing Bloodseeker has going for him. I'm going to be very curious to see how this works for Dream Time, though. And uh, already out of I, the gate, they're hoping for a one v one matchup with the Bloodseeker versus Nature's Prophet. They're yeah. just they're just not going to get it. Titan say, look, we know what you want. You're not going to have it. We're going to send Net as well as Extinct down towards the bottom. Yeah, line. we're not going to give it to you. Let's introduce these rosters, though. On the Radiant side, we do have Dream Time. They're down 0-1 in this best of two series, and this will be their chance to tie it up. We've got XDD on the position one Bloodseeker in the solo safe lane. Air will be in the mid playing on the Razor. Let's get some Dota sounds here in the mix, gods. And up in the top lane, that'll be an aggro try in July playing on the Darkseer and his two supports. They're just... Hanging out uh, scouted in, the, too. in the camp here. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of an odd odd little setup. It will be Dreamy You on the Shadow Shaman and Super on the Ancient Apparition. Yeah, they're not fooling Ohio. Ohio is going to be your dire safe lane farmer on the Nature's Prophet. He's solo, though, against what seems to be a trial for now. Oh, Yamate in the mid lane. He's playing a Mirana. He's getting well, losing a lot of his damage. You're going to miss an arrow here. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, is KYX on the Doom. It's going to be Extinct on the Disrupt, and then finally Net on the Sand King, looking for a potential rotation into this Bloodseeker XDD. He can't get anything out of this lane. He's he's just royally screwed. Yeah, and now Bloodseeker, he has a, a lot of reputations about him, but one of them certainly is not as uh, a good recovery hero, and he is getting completely shut down here. Still 0-0. Zero and zero. We'll get a little bit of experience as these creeps move into the tower. Finally gets a last hit or two on the board here with that Quelling Blade, but... I worry about this hero getting such a slow start. I mean, what what's his recovery mechanism? You probably won't see Bloodseeker get a hand of Midas. No. And uh, I don't know what. I, like, I, that's the other thing. Like when I think Bloodseeker, like oh yeah, useless hero. And then like, well, what items do you get to make him less useful? I'm like, well, I can't think of any items that actually make him any better. Yeah, four staff is about the only one because it's utility yeah. and it also. Buffs I see up like kind of tanky but... builds. Like you go blade mail, you go like heaven's halberd type items, but. Doing any kind of th like he doesn't he's not a carry here like he can't actually right click and do much damage like I've never seen a very impressive Bloodseeker carry potential except when yeah. you're like your pub stomp game so the that's only, any hero the only thing that he does well is kind of just take out the trash he comes into a team fight where your opponents are he is know, the trash yeah a couple he, of he, <laughs> that's where he belongs with the trash I'll tell you he that. eats the trash and absorbs it into he's his soul one with the trash uh, I mean if you have like supports that are getting away with like five percent HP then Bloodseeker can come swooping in with his uh, super fast speed but um, yeah, that's about the only time he's really useful. Nat rotating into the mid with Extinct, but he takes a lot of damage from that Razor yeah. and a few tower shots as well. To you, He'll be forced back that Plasma Field just denied. a little too potent. Level 4, two points in it. Man, Sand King, yeah, he'll be forced to, uh, forced to burn a salve here. Yeah, so uh, all in all, uh, Titan the supports, aren't, I'm not entirely sure where or what they want to do right now, it feels like. That's something where Titan often normally excel in the early game, but... Uh, the unusual lane step is just making things a bit trickier, but it looks like Net's going to go for another swoop towards the mid lane. He's still level 1, but he has got boots. Just killing air is just not really possible. Like, a Sand King Mirana, the killing power isn't there. Speaking of Mirana, we've gone for a 2 points in leap. It's pretty much for the cooldown decrease, as well as just the extra range, because hmm. the Static Link is so annoying in this lane, he wants to have that extra point in leap uh, to help him out. But yeah. it, it gives him such less killing power. Yeah, here we'll see a stun oh, from Net, oh. Arrow will be off the mark. I, that gets a big question mark for me. That hmm. was Yamate. I don't know what they were thinking there. He doesn't want to leap in for one thing. You're leaping into a static link. You don't have... All yeah. they have is a level 2 arrow. Even if that arrow hits, it's a 0 second stun. It's like a bit of damage. They were not killing Razor with that leap, leap plus arrow, even if the arrow lands. That was just... Bloody awful. That was, yeah, that was that was just odd. Arrow almost connects with Dreamy Yu here as they contest this bottom rune, but just barely off the mark. It will be a double damage spawns at the top position, and uh, air on the razor will go ahead and bottle that up. So I I, I don't I don't know what's happening here in the mid lane. There's I, there's a visual mm. bug when sometimes you throw melee arrows that um, it, no it flies right. through them but it still hits, but that did not hit. He took yeah. no damage. That was that's and that's why I kind of I stutter there. That's I, that's yeah. happened to me before. I was like, oh, that arrow was off the mark, but yeah. it actually just flies through, and the graphics still that still was chases, not one of those. <laughs> yeah, his his health didn't even take a dip. So even if it hits, like, what's the plan? What what, how do you follow up that arrow? You, it's a zero second stun and you've got no ex no Star Storm. Sanking was level one, that was just 
Well, yeah. look, Yamate's a great player. He's, that, that goes without saying. He's carried Titan, well, not so much like single-handedly. They've done great as a team, but that was just very dubious. Yes. Now, there's been a lot of lane rotating from Titan, and it has cost them some experience here early on. Looks like Nature's Prophet will finally head down to the off lane. He does have his face boots complete, so he's in okay shape. There's been a tri-lane rotation from DT. They were originally up top supporting the Darkseer, and now they're supporting the Bloodseeker. And uh, he'll be actually sitting 28-2 in, in terms of CS, number two overall after that Darkseer, who's been pretty much having a field day in the offlane. Yeah, um, we'll see what this Bloodseeker can do here. Actually, well, he got vision of someone for a second using that, that passive. His KYX was low in HP at top lane, but he'll be okay for now. Yeah, Chilling Touch comes out, and uh, XDD will do some damage to these Treants, but they won't be able to do too much damage to Ohio here. He's got the phase boots, and that just yeah. makes him so much harder to lock down. Gets that Blood Rage off, but that's just Ohio saying, thanks for the damage, that can last hit harass even better. Does yep. have to be a bit careful with uh, Shadow Shaman poking forward, but... With phase boots up of his own, he's got that movement speed boost to keep himself alive. Looks like they went for another kill mid lane air. Once again escaping. The max arrow build from Yamate. Uh, yeah, this is a much different Marana build than I'm used lane. to seeing. Oh god. Yep, should have should have suspected there's, there's the There's so many heroes like there. low on HP on the map. Ned's gonna deny himself yeah. to the road tank, because they actually have vision of this one. Me, you no mana for a eat the shock, unfortunately. Yeah. A little bit unfortunate. Nice play by Ned. Now super. He may pay for this actually as Ohio responds. He will buy back for that to get a recovery kill. Probably okay. Yeah. It's such a, like, 200 gold, like, that, you kind of break even, and you break even on gold and you get ahead in experience, as well as less downtime while you're not farming. <laughs> and, uh, yep, yeah, yeah and, and you send the Ancient Apparition back to the well, so, you're right, early on, probably worth it. Unfortunately, though, first blood did come out, and, uh, it was, was it Bloodseeker that got the kill? Yeah. Yeah, it certainly was. So this Bloodseeker actually looking... Pretty good right now. There will be a rotation down bottom. Dreamy you. Now we're off the oh, map. Yeah. Just get spotted by an observer. So they know Yamate's here. That's uh, a big thing. And he needs to be careful. Bloodseeker, not level 6 yet, though. So. Yep. Hmm. Now I'm curious. Will this Bloodseeker actually be able to do something? On net worth, he is almost number 1. Doom just about 2 creep kills ahead of him. Ah. Base boots up on the Bloodseeker, halfway to level 6. Maybe he can start roaming around at 6. That's where Ohio will start to struggle, though. Arrow, this time, will connect on a Bloodseeker. Sprout comes out, and that'll just be an easy kill. Now, Dreamy you, he's in big trouble as well. They'll easily dive this tower. They'll move into the side, but doesn't have a TP scroll. Nowhere to go, and it will be a double kill coming out for Ohio. Now, a port in from in July. There's the Moonlight Shadow. Well, I think Yamate in trouble here. He needs to go for a TP out. Leaps into the side here, has a TP. Nice go. play from him, and... Ohio, no mana for TP for about Radiant's two seconds, but he'll have that soon enough. He'll attack. make his way out. Really good save from uh, Titan Man. Yep, and oh, thought Net may get engaged on in the mid lane. But yeah, Titan just uh, with a small burst of momentum, they survive and they create some space with all those rotations down bottom. KYXY and Extinct are pressuring that top tier one tower. They won't be able to finish it off in this push, but Radiant's they do a pretty significant amount of damage. Attack. So good news for Titan across the map. And with that, Doom takes over as the leading farmer by a good margin over that Bloodseeker. Yep. Uh, well, I, I think in general, like, the, you mean, you look at a hero like Doom, he's going to offer a lot more with farm. He's actually picked up it's a Vanguard build. Oh, not, a, not a build you see every day coming Ugh. out from a Doombringer. So KYXY, he wants to tank up and tank up early. Normally you go for the mech over this, but uh, I guess there's no one else going for that mech. So maybe he goes back for it, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big usual. fan here. Yeah, I mean, Vanguard can be a really good item, but... In a situation like this, it costs almost the same as mech. They're pretty close to one another, but yeah. one of them gives you so much more utility. Vanguard is just straight HP regeneration and gives you that little block. Mech, especially on Doom, it buffs up his EHP so much because he's so low on that armor. And mech gives you a lot of armor as well as regeneration. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that probably would have been the, the more effective pickup here, but... I mean, I feel like even if he goes back for the mech now, Vanguard into mech, that's a lot of gold spent on early item defensive, or, or early defensive items, and then in teamfights, DT yeah. can kind of just ignore the Doom a little bit, and he doesn't His really hit that His often hard. to tank up, though. Like, he's, yeah. he just kind of runs in first, but yeah. Vanguard's more known for being picked up on, like, heroes that actually go straight into fights, so he may go for a Blink Dagger with this if he wants to be mm -hmm. fighting, fighting into things. That's like your slider that goes Vanguard, because he's always in the front lines with his sprint, blinking in. Spectre goes for Vanguards because you're haunting directly in the middle of fight. So right. if Doom goes Vanguard, it kind of maybe signals towards him going for like a later on Blink Dagger build. 
Yeah, and at the very least, it will signify Doom getting Rupt more active. Line. They'll rotate into the mid as well, and they'll engage onto the Shadow Shaman. He'll fall Ohio. Meanwhile, he ports out down bottom, and it will just be a one for nil across the map as Titan finish off the Shadow Shaman. KYXY still with an ultimate available. Air maybe needs to be a little careful here. But nope, won't throw the ultimate, and they'll just kind of back up. Okay, all right. There you go. No big, no big. So uh, for Titan, they're four kills to two, pretty pretty small lead. It's dead even as far as the gold graph looks, and only a small experience lead for Titan. So uh, not really pulling away yet, but I feel Titan's mid game is just going to be a lot scarier. Once Net gets his levels, <laughs> gets his blink dagger up, you've got to disrupt it with an ultimate. That's where like, I feel Bloodseeker's mid game is pretty underwhelming. We can see there, like even using the rupture doesn't really guarantee you many kills there. I haven't got the lockdown to stop people just TPing out. Mm hmm. And Bloodseeker is one of those heroes who kind of looks for those solo ganks, rotations around the map, and when you can't stop people teeping away from you, it's kind of hard to actually secure kills for your team. Yep, and that is one of his big problems. He just gets countered by that TP scroll. We see Net up top does connect with a Burrow Strike onto In July. We'll use the Static Storm, and oh, wow, the Kinetic Field. Actually, I think he was stuck on the other side. That was a, an odd play from In July right there. I think he, was, he got stuck on... So Kinetic Field comes out. And I think he made it to this side of the kinetic field, but then tried to run back in and got stuck on it on this edge as he tried I, to go back into it. I think it. he was just stuck inside it. Was he beginning. stuck inside? It was sort of he an tried odd... To, he tried to escape it, but like it looks like you're outside of it, but, but you're, you're actually still stuck in it. Inside. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, may maybe that was the, the problem there. Dreamy you, he'll get surrounded in the mid lane. No, he'll make it back to the trees. And, uh, well, maybe they'll turn it around on the Yamate here. He'll leap back to safety. Static link. Absorbing a lot of damage. So, okay, yeah, maybe he was stuck inside yeah, the kinetic he was field there. Definitely stuck inside it. Okay. It, it just with the, the graphic with, just looks a little bit awkward. With how far he ran, it looks like it was like just outside of it, maybe. Gotcha, gotcha. So Bloodseeker's picked up a Vit booster. He's maybe going for a Vanguard. Yeah, he's going for Vanguard. Okay, Vanguard gaming here in uh, game two of DT vs Titan. He just, I mean, Bloodseeker's similar to the Doom in that he just wants to tank up. Um, he's got a long silence as well. I mean, he can compare Blood Range a bit to Doom here. XTD now in trouble at bottom lane though. Yeah, going in a bit over his head. He may get the kill on the higher hit. Unfortunately, no. Oh, oh wow, oh, twelve hit points. If he gets that kill, his bloodbath heals him up a good amount there, like twenty percent of his max HP. So we'd have gotten him about two hundred HP ish, and why? I think he's still dead, but hey, it would have been a nice little kill. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, only two points in the bloodbath, but yeah, uh, would have definitely helped him out a lot there. So Titan, they'll turn it around on him now. They'll look to converge on the KYXY. He has his ultimate available, but no mana for it. And I think he may just take a spill right here. Vanguard helps out quite a bit, but just not enough. The Cold Feet, level 3, does proc, and that makes it an easy kill. Support for Titan are inbound, though. And maybe they can get some recovery kills here. Marana. And there's the Burrow Strike on the Shadow Shaman to get things started. Static Storm comes out from the Disruptor, and that'll put Ancient Apparition in kind of an awkward position here. The Sand King does get picked off. AA falls, and now Air. He's okay for now. Bloodseeker. Titan have to run. Like, they, yep. they TP'd everyone out there. Of course, the TPs. <laughs> with Bloodseeker back, he gets vision of all those heroes who are, who are like, low HP, and you can't actually just kite people around. That's the one, that's, to me, is Bloodseeker's best attribute. Is he, you can't, you can't, like, um, kite and use, you can't juke him, basically, once you're low HP. Mm -hmm. In teamfights, you often see heroes get down to, like, a quarter HP, even, like, less. And if it's a hero like a Sand King or a Shadow Shaman, they can just hide in the trees and then come back in later on. Ooh, arrow connects on XDD inside of tower range. Sand King ports in. There's a Burrow Strike. And, yeah, Bloodseeker will pay for overcommitting into that tower. Now Air maybe in a bit of trouble as well. Sprout working against Titan because he tangos through. Yeah, nicely chase. done. Only had one tango remaining as well. So we'll just port back to the well and, of course, does survive. Alrighty. Not bad, not bad for DT. This Bloodseeker is still though very ineffective. One and three, he's, he's he just, just can't bring much. Yeah, he just can't do anything. And I, I don't even think it's really him playing particularly poorly. I mean, he didn't really need to get hit by that arrow and that last Radiant's death in the tower, tower, but still, attack. he just he can't do a whole lot. Anytime he throws out the disruption, or, or pardon me, not the disruption, the rupture, they just TP home Radiant's or they they stand still. They don't have any tools attack. to really punish it all that much. There will be a push down bottom, and it looks like DT will be the first to lose a tower. The glyph does come out, buys him a little bit of time, and they Radiant's will try and pressure this top tier one. KYXY may find himself in a bit of a sticky wicket here Radiant's momentarily. There is TP support. Uh, Marana's TPing top, yeah, TPing the tier two as well, so they know this push is coming. And now come the Rost Awards. A ultimate will fly off the mark, and Moonlight Shadow comes down. Radiant side does put down a sentry. And do anyway, actually, he's beast moding right now. Yeah, they'll finish Dyer's off the... Uh, oh, the arrow into in July! Oh, wow. 
KYXY, he'll finish him off, and it may cost him his life here as XCD Doesn't comes matter. in. He took out two yep. to get that. Mine. They dived him under the tower. He gets two kills and survives it. And they lost the Disruptor on the backside, so it ends up being a two for three exchange. Titans still get the better of it, and they also do lose their tower. Compliments yeah. of those they, Frost They awards. were losing that tower regardless there. They made yep. the best out of that one. Disruptor died under the tower. I don't didn't see exactly what under the Disruptor, just chased the Doom there mostly, but uh, he did go down in the Serpent Lord, which attack. is a bit, a bit of a loss there, but... Mm -hmm. Titan just they're looking good here. Radiance bottom yep. tower uh, is under attack. Gold lead about fifteen hundred uh three thousand experience or so. They're definitely in pretty good shape. The uh, one disparity here is net. Does he have a blink dagger on the courier? No, he does not. He's he is struggling more than he normally does. A bit under farmed, yeah, and some of it was he was in the mid lane for a little while. All that lane shuffling really slowed him down. Usually uh, from the past few games we've seen of Titan, they've they've kept their lanes pretty stable, and that's opened up room in the jungle for the Sand King just to stack and farm up, use that Sandstorm. In this game, he had to lane a little bit, and, uh, well, he got more experience than he normally would, but didn't really do too much for his farm. Yeah. This game's been all about, for Titan, the Prophet and the Mirana. Uh, Prophet's been involved in so much of this, the action this game. Seven kills already. Mirana's been hitting some massive arrows in team fights, and also just setting up kills and ganks as well. So these two players are definitely the stand-up for Titan here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I hadn't realized that uh, the Nature's Prophet was 7-1 and one right now, and even the Mirana 1-0-6. So she certainly has been quite involved in the mid lane. Looks like we could see some action heat up. The Mirana could be in some trouble in July coming in. We'll take a Star Storm, only level 3, but uh-oh, there's the Silence on a Marana. Won't have a leap, there's the Rupture, and Ancient Apparition Ult will fly just barely off the mark. But Kinetic Field comes in, and uh, just not enough to save the Marana. So Dreamy you he'll find a kill there with the other Shock, and Disrupture, or dis Disruption comes in. Why do I keep confusing this? I'm messing with my dyslexia here, gods. Rupture comes in handy. Rupture and Disruptor. If it wasn't two. for the AA ultimate, that like he silenced and then ruptured the Mirana. The only reason they got the kill though was the AA ultimate, because Mirana was just like tanking that rupture damage. Mirana was like, I'm just gonna keep running while ruptured, yeah. and he was like doing very minimal damage. Yeah, well, that was one of those. If he didn't, if he just stood there, he would have died. So yeah, he, he kind of had to run to really at least roll choice. the dice. I actually, when I was watching, this, I saw I saw him get silenced, ruptured, like oh he's dead, and then he kind of started running. And I'm like oh, it actually looks like he's gonna live. Yeah, <laughs> Bloodseeker, good hero, guys. <laughs> It was sort of a, a close call-ish, but, uh, yeah. Still falls in the end, and everyone's just going to kind of go back to farming here. Now, Doom, he went for power treads into the Vanguard, and now went into Drum of yeah. Endurance. He's tanky, he's a bit speedy now as well. Arrow the mid lane, not going to land on anyone. These years are all pretty low here. In July yep. gets the mech off, though. Uh-huh. Yep. Mech up on that Dark Series, also level 11. And two sets of drums, actually, on the way for Titan Marana. Looks like she'll be committing to drums. A little bit of overkill, double drum, not bad, not the best either. Can definitely get away with it's it. It's good on both heroes. It, I, I, I don't, I never have too many issues going more than one drums on a team. Yeah, not too bad. And uh, Nature's Prophet did go ahead and transition into Hand of Midas after the phase boots, but here he goes for a Shadow Blade first. Shadow Blade looks like he'll go into the Necrobook afterwards. Shadow Blade gives him some good damage output to go with, uh, with this, and he needs to be a bit of a semi carry here. He's actually the main kind of right click damage. I think Prophet's almost a better. Like, trans like carry transition a hero than even a Mirana. Mirana doesn't really flash farm as well as a Prophet does. Arrow once again off the mark in the mid lane. Dreamy you will perhaps luck out a little bit as it whizzes right by his head. There will be a four-man smoke from DT, though. And we'll see where they want to go with this one. Looks like they want to wrap around in the mid lane. This could just be a gank onto the Mirana. They do have a Sentry Ward down as well, so NWP with a Moonlight Shadow available. It may not be his get-out-of-jail-free card. There's the surge onto Dreamy Yu. He does get off the Hex, but the Leap also flies. Interrupts the Shackle. And even though the Rasta Wards come down, they will get a kill on the Shadow Shaman as Doom rotates in. There's the Glimpse. And that'll catch the Ancient Apparition. That'll be a two for nil. And they're going to clean up these wards. Looks like they will keep their tower safe. Nicely handled by Team Titan. Yeah, and they're also pushing down this top T1 tower. How are going to get this team even more gold? Wow, uh, that's, that's a costly fight for Dreamtime. They could not afford to make plays like that. Diving too deep under the tower there. Uh, the Surgeon on the Shadow Shaman was a nice little idea, but they had to get it a further away from that T1 tower. Yeah, and it was just a great reaction from the Marana as well, getting the leap off right as the Hex came. That's not an easy thing to do. We talked about uh, those instant cast times with the Telekinesis on Rubik, and Shadow Shaman has one of those with the Voodoo, uh, or the Hex, pardon mm -hmm. me. And, um, Let's take a bottom. Yep. Gonna get epicenter. Ooh, epicenter will be enough to secure that kill. Easy peasy. 
And that just adds another one to the scoreboard. Not much the Bloodseeker can do there. Yeah. Vanguard yeah. ain't gonna save you from the epicenter. Yeah, Profit keeping as well to help secure that one. And Yamate's TP down bottom as well, so Titan may be thinking about pressing this bottom tier too, but with epicenter on cooldown, Sanking X is gonna pick up his blink dagger now, so net he's level ten, he's got his blink. Now the uh the tree warfare begins. <laughs> yeah, uh, Moonlight Shadow used by Yamate. And perhaps looking to line up an arrow down here in the bottom lane will just angle himself in the tree line. Maybe he can connect with an arrow Bullseye. into Dreamy Yu. Yes, he will. And won't leap forward. Just throws the Star Storm. Easy kill. Wrath of Nature comes out as well. And well played. Just an easy setup right there. And now 16-7. to All of a sudden, Team Titan. Huge swing of momentum. Just about 6,000 gold and experience in their favor. Yeah, and they're going to go for another kill this bottom lane. Arrow going to go flying. Super's going to be just off the mark. That was close. Yamate very close oh. with that one. Meanwhile in the mid, XDD in trouble. He'll take a bro strike to get things started. Doom with the ultimate. In comes Darkseer trying to keep his good buddy alive. Ion Shell as well as the Surge comes out. And it looks like it might be enough. Teleport coming in from the Nature's Prophet. Doom ultimate still on a bit longer. There's the bro strike. That'll be the end of the Bloodseeker. Now the Ancient Apparition falls. Arrow connects onto In July. Rasta Wards come out behind the tower. But Titan, they've already done the damage. It's a three for nil. <laughs> The wards won't do too much. It may repel yeah. the push as Ohio will start to clear him up with the tree ants. And Dreamy, you actually wow. got a glimpse back to his fountain as well after TP him, which Ooh. actually, I think he would have died there. So Titan actually saved his life with that glimpse. But either way, they're getting this tier one tower. Serpent wards is a lot of golden experience going there. Another sun coming in from the trees here. Air's in trouble. The arrow off the mark, it looks like. Possibly even pops his BKB just in time. Air. He's going to go try to fight this one, but loses Radiant's the tier one tower. Airway XY with the last hit as well. So Titan looking really good here in game two. Yeah, they really are. Just another convincing team fight. That's now a Necro 2 up on the Nature's Prophet. And uh, AA ult will fly into the well, but we'll be a little disappointed here to find no low heroes that uh, will fall victim to Shatter. Just harasses Ohio a little bit. Yeah, slow down his TT back the lane, but he's not too bothered. Doom now with a completed Shivers Guard. Yeah, well, actually, he's pretty fat. I mean, looking at Titan as a whole, they're all, especially their two main core heroes, Doom and Prophet, both very far. Mirana. Only 6k net worth. I'm going to say a little bit behind, but he's been roaming and setting up a lot of kills this game. <laughs> yeah, I can't complain with this Marana at all. He's been involved been in denied. 10 of their 19 kills. So, yeah, he hasn't been farming, but still playing his role, still being a space creator, and now Doom and Nature's Prophet just taking over that net worth chart. Both sitting pretty at about 11.3k, and, um... Uh-oh. He's only going to get worse from here. Bro strike actually off the mark. Net, please. There's a, there's a glimpse though. They'll set up with a kinetic field yes. in July. He can't get out of this one. Yep, gets glimpsed back oh, right into the, the arrow. Oh. They get scared. Okay. Uh, the backup comes in and DT. Turn things around. Yeah, there was another bro strike available for net there, Radiant's but uh, he plays it a little bit more attack. cautiously than Blink I would have thought. Blink. Blink. Oh, wow. Just in the nick of time. Moonlight oh, Shadow comes out. Now. Bro he's, strikes he's, into the trees. He's sub half HP. They see him. Oh, yeah, you're right. Bloodseeker. What are they going to do? Oh boy, they'll finish off the Shadow Shaman. Zen King does fall to the Razor, but they at least make it a one for one. And Extinct, he'll make it into the trees. Support inbound, there is a Doom Ultimate online. But I think that's where it'll settle down, support for support trade. Yeah, and they've got to get back DT. They've lost their, top, I think a T2 tower up top and possibly more if they can to keep going. Here, the Sprout on In July. He's in some trouble here. Ohio will get a TP out though. Yeah. In July, he killed one of the uh, the, the red necrobook with a lot of self damage there, but Prophet now finishes the necro three. Yep, more space creation, and that does translate to another tower kill. That will take it now uh, two to four in total tower count in favor of Titan, and Doom already at another fourteen hundred gold. It seems like just a few minutes ago he picked up that Shiva's guard, and he'll go ahead and grab himself a gem. So map control, map control will uh, further go into Titan's favor here. Any other item progression extinct? Well, working towards an Ag Scepter. Just sitting on a point booster right now, but looking to be in pretty good shape. Yeah. Well, Ohio just TP's back top. He's going to look just focus, keep all these lanes pushed out as much as possible. I think Titan may go for Roshan fairly soon. Uh, they've definitely got map control now. Maybe maybe wait to deal with a little bit more with this gem, but they've got map control. They can take tier twos. They can go Roshan, and their gold lead will just continue to increase over the next five, ten minutes, I feel. Mm -hmm. And it's just skyrocketed now. 12,000 gold experience in their favor. At only a 24-minute mark. Sand King, not in the trees. Actually just hanging out on the high ground up here. Just waiting for someone to walk by. And, uh-oh, maybe they'll find it down bottom. Air gets initiated on. He gets glimpsed back. And get an easy tower kill. Tower is under attack. Not going to BKB just for a glimpse. Not really worth it. So, 
and they'll, they'll wander back here. And that will stay poised on the high ground for a little bit longer before blinking down and making his way towards mid. Yep, he sure will, and that'll be a burrow strike onto Dreamy You Arrow to follow up, and that'll just be the easiest kill on Shadow Shaman they found this game. Absolutely. Nothing nothing specky about that one at all. Now they go into the Roshan pit with the Necrobook. This will be pretty straightforward. Necrobook's going to expire, but they've got more than enough damage. KYX will come in to help things out, and I think Titan are well on their way to a Game 2 victory here. Mm -hmm. It's looking good. This Nature's Prophet is just so farmed now. He's got another 2,500 gold already, and he just picked up that Necro 3. Rosh actually not falling that quickly, but... Falling quickly enough. I mean, DT, they're just not in a place to contest. Ancient Apparition does have an ultimate available. He could throw it into the pit, but it's only level 1 Ice Blast. And yeah, it would give him some visual intel. Might slow down Titan a little bit. But not much they could have done there, honestly. Yeah, and now not only are Titan getting filthy rates, like you've got Prophet who's hit level 16, so that's a level 3 ulti. Uh, you've got Doom who's close to his level 16 as max out ulti, and just in general, like even the supports, Disruptor and Sanking both level 11, so both have level 2 ultis, and Disruptor close to an Aghanim Scepter to go with this, so that's one way of even dealing with the Razor BKB if you can get that ulti on him, prevent him from casting it. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Now, uh, there is a gem picked up on the Radiant side, oh. I think they put it back on the Courier. Uh, Bloodseeker's yeah, answered the mystery of what his next item's going to be. He's going for Radiant. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's the relic. You can. This is like, why did you pick this over like a Spectre? That's what I don't get. Yeah, and we'll see him just get initiated on here. The epicenter goes off, and XDD. I mean, I think, just, I think Spectre was banned out in fairness, but like yes. any other r legit carry. Yeah, it's it's kind of an odd. It, you know, I, I was gonna suggest Radiance uh, when we were first talking about him, but it seems like such a pub build, and it, it's hard to get away with. And I, I say a pub build because he's not a hero that really synergizes with Radiance all that well. It doesn't really, you know, like an, an illusion carry. You know, like your Terror Blades, your Nagas. There's a lot of synergy there with the Radiance Spectre as well. Bloodseeker. It's not really any better on him than it is on any other. Hero, <laughs> you know. I mean, it just—it's just weird. Uh, I, I don't know what they were doing with this blood. Arrow's gonna hit the AA here, but oh, follow-up damage is coming. Starstorm and uh, level death. That's gonna finish off super. No A ulti for the defense here. Doom goes on the dark here. Kill X Y. He's got Aegis, so he's not in any trouble here. They're gonna blow up the Shadow Shaman. Net's in trouble now. He actually put himself in a bad spot there. Should have maybe just let left Doom be because Doom was fine with Aegis, and he's just so incredibly tanky. So a bit of a misplay out there. From that, but not gonna yep. matter. Arrow flies in, just connects with that range creep, but Titan did about half damage to this tower. They won't force the issue. Nature's Prophet will grab himself a Desolator. So now he hits really hard in July. He'll feel the brunt of it. He will surge himself up as he gets stuck inside the Sprout and will survive. But yeah, now these structures, they'll go down like butter to a warm knife as that Desolator cuts through their armor. Yeah, Titan just playing good Dota right now. I'll TP towards bottom lane, and at this point, with a Desolator, their pushing power just increases even more. It's kind of what they needed, because KYXY on Doom's not offering a whole lot of damage output. The Mirana just has BKB and is kind of tanking things up right now, so not a lot of damage output from uh, Yamate either. So it really does come down to Nature's Prophet to be the base breaker as well as general carry hero for the team. Yeah, and like you mentioned, BKB out on Mirana makes Yamate a lot more, uh, lot more tanky, and that is his 10-second BKB he's yet to use. We'll see Nature's Prophet just... Keep pushing in the lane, he'll rotate up top, and well, doing what every good Nature's Prophet would in this kind of a scenario. One uh, standout statistic, though, that we haven't made mention of is that Air has had a pretty good game on this Razor. He is 5-0-0. Zero, zero. So even though his yeah. team's been struggling a little bit, he has yet to take a spill, and he's been involved in more of half their kills. He's really farmed, too. For considering that how many towers behind they are and just, just the general state of the game, like he's looking really good here. And yeah. they tried to gank him a number of times. They actually really emphasized pressuring him a lot. Mm -hmm. it just didn't didn't work. Air is still big. He's yeah. still farm, so. He's had a good game. We see Titan. They're just setting the trap here. Net hiding in the trees and uh, NWP. He's just on the high ground. And yep. they're just hanging out here. They're having a little party and maybe brought some tea, a picnic blanket. Unfortunately for them, DT are they're just nowhere to be found. They're on the other Radiant's side of the map. Now they'll rotate over attack. and well, maybe they'll spring this trap guard. Yamate, he, he can still farm while up here is the other thing. He's been cliff jungling. This is the second neutral camp he's killed while up here. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's not too bad. At least he's Beats getting nothing. finding something out of it. So DT won't a... leave their base, though. They, yeah. oh, they, they'll see two heroes mid, so yeah, they're going to go for this XDD. He's 200 from Radiance, and I don't think he's going to get it if he dies here. 
Oh, they no. see him and they want him. Channeled. Yep, and oh, there you go. There's the bro strike forward, and that is going to be one dead blood seeker. He was carrying the gem as well. Short range arrow will connect onto super. In comes the nature's prophet. The desolator just hits too hard. Now, Doom used on the dark seer. He'll get glimpsed straight into a sprout. That'll be a three for nil, and Titan just clean it up there. Their little sting operation in the woods proved successful here, gods. Yeah. Now the base under heavy siege. They went about it so smart. They showed the prophet top, and then they showed two heroes at mid lane as well. So Bloodseeker, he wasn't pushing out until he saw three heroes on the map. Two mids, one top. He assumed it's safe. Nuh-uh. Two heroes can kill him easily on their own. Nope, you can never assume that when Nets on the other team. He was in, yeah. the tree, he, he was in a tree near you, gods, and uh, oh, made him man. pay for it. Top uh, lane of racks gone. actually get cleaned up, and... Yeah, DT, they just don't have the resources to deal with the split push at this point. No. Um, range racks are going to go down as well, and that's, that's getting very close common. to GG here in game number two. Titan now get themselves a big, big 20k plus gold lead. They can fall back, wait for the next rotation if they want to. They've still got this Aegis now, so it feels like they do want to use it, but it is going to expire in the next sort of 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, there, there won't be any real, I mean, I was going to say there won't be an advantage, an obvious advantage to waiting for the next rush, but I don't think it's necessary. Even without the Aegis, I think they can just uh, kind of storm their way to victory at this point. They've got two 10-second BKBs. I don't think Marana popped hers in that last spot. Oh, she did. Never mind. So, 10-second BKB on the Doom, a 9-second on the Marana, and uh, actually almost a Veil of Discord here on the Sand King. Who's your MVP for this game? We we're talking about this between the games. Uh, for something the viewers don't know, MVPs for each game actually get cash prize money. It's 500 RMB, which is roughly 80, 90 US dollars. Yeah. And that's for every single best of one. Like, well, every, well, yeah. well two games in a best of two suits. Every single game has an MVP and that player gets mm -hmm. a prize for it. So, who would you say this game for Titan? Hmm. That is a good question. I, I kind of want to say this Nature's Prophet. He's just been so yeah. active. I mean, Ohio's Nature's Prophet is something to be feared, but you know, he did a good job in his lane, he rotated a lot, he was flexible, he went the Shadow Blade first, and he's just been creating space for his team. I, 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 it, it's kind of hard to say, they didn't have one like really obvious standout player, we'll hold that thought as his initiation in the mid lane, both air as well as XDD in Top big BKB. trouble, he can't use the, the BKB. Acceptor. Oh boy, it's out on the, the uh, disruption. Yeah. It's, it, it's just over. But I think I'd have to go with Ohio here. Who would you say? I was thinking Ohio too. The only yeah. other one I'd maybe make a case for is Yamate because he's hit some massive arrows, which which got tied in the head in my opinion. But I'd say all in all, I think Ohio's played probably the most solid game. I mean, it's easy yeah. to look at the hero with the most net worth and like lots of kill involvement right. using his ulti. But I would, I'd say 50-50 between Ohio and Yamate, and I'd probably go Ohio. Yeah, if it was on me to make the uh, the final decision. They were both involved in a lot of kills. 9-1 nine, and 9 on the Nature's Prophet, and um, here we can see... Uh, oh, never mind. I thought they popped up the camera. One of the uh, DT players looking a little flustered, but uh, I missed yeah. it. Well, so... It's all over. Uh, Titan get themselves another 2-0 victory. That's like six wins in a row for them. They're, yeah. they're looking good. They're, they're hot stuff right now. So coming up next, it will be a little bit more difficult, though. They'll be up against Newbie and um, a match where Titan are actually kind of the underdogs going in. And this will be the ultimate test so far in their gauntlet. If they could go 2 over Newbie, then Titan, are, they're doing something right. That would be exciting. Exciting yeah. to see. It's good, good news for Southeast Asia because mm -hmm. Southeast Asia has kind of fallen off in the last... Uh, I'd just say a couple months, especially since like a lot of the talent from Southeast Asia, like you've got Mushi as well as Ice Ice Ice, pretty much the two best individually individually skilled players in Southeast Asia, yeah. saying peace, I'm going to China, and that's where you need teams like Orange Time to step it up and SCA fighting. Yeah, SCA fighting indeed. So we'll have a decent break here, at least 30 minutes or so, maybe 30, 40 minutes until our next best of two is scheduled to get started. Uh, I'm Zayori, with me today is Gods, and you're watching WPC Ace. Plenty more Dota 2 action coming up after this break.